natural numbers. So assume that, uh, well, one more thing, service times are exponentially distributed. So that's telling us the middle letter is M and we have one server, right? And of course, in this course, we will always have uh, exponentially distributed inter-arrival times. But of course, the question needs to indicate that as well to be proper. Um, did they say that? Um, did they say that? Oh, well, yeah, they did. We missed it, right? Cars arrive in a Poisson fashion. So the arrival rate follows Poisson distribution. Hence, the inter-arrival time follows exponential. So that's good enough for us to say the first letter is M. Now, notice what we have done is that we understood the entire question. We know it is talking about a MM1 configuration. So we take out the set of formulas associated with it and apply it. Okay, so without much difficulty, because those are just formulas, we just press the calculator carefully. We can get all the calculations right. Okay, so that gives us the output, the, uh, the, the outcomes of applying uh, our understanding of MM1 formulas onto this particular Q system. We can see that, so, so, so the, the, the last stage is about interpreting these numbers. The server is kind of nicely utilized, not idling too much, not overutilized as to threaten the stability of the queue. Uh, we can also look at an average of one car is in the queue and in the server booth. So, okay, so, so the entire queue system is the queue and also the service area, right? And together in its entirety, the toll booth uh, area, we expect to see one car, which means sometimes no cars, sometimes two cars, right? Uh, and sometimes one car and, and so, that, so, so that on average, we should expect one car in the entire system. That's supposed to say that um, uh, if, our, if our reference level is, it shouldn't be too congested, then perhaps we can conclude that, mm, okay, this Q system is okay because one car is really not indicating that it's too congested. How about customer experience? So we might say that uh, we don't want the drivers to feel that they have waited for too long. How long on average should they, do they wait uh, in order to, to you know, pay the toll? Well, uh, they wait 0.25 of a minute. All right, 0.25, a quarter of a minute. So that's about 15 seconds to be served. Well, that feels okay. If our reference is they shouldn't wait more than 20 seconds, okay, then that's good. But if our reference is that's too long in this digital age, they should wait no more than five seconds, then that's very bad. So we cannot judge right the, the goodness or badness of the result until we have a reference level. But what is true is that when we know of the configuration, we can know these calculated results. Next, let's look at um, the MG1 case. The MG1 case is when we have generalized service times distribution. So the service times do not have to be exponentially distributed. They can be anything, normally distributed, uniformly distributed, so and so on and so forth. Uh, what is needed will be the, of course, the mean service time that we must know because we need to know mu, so we will know one over mu. Additionally, that's just one more number that we need to know in this case. Uh, that is the standard deviation of the service times, of the service times. So for example, are those service times fluctuating a lot, such as in a bank transaction situation, right? Uh, you don't actually know what the customers are trying to do. Some may be opening a complicated uh, foreign exchange, foreign currency investment account that might require you to check your citizenship status, you know, nationality, confirm everything. So it may be a long uh, procedure. Or the customer might be waiting to ask, are you open on Saturday? Yes, two seconds service time, right? So, well, uh, it, it is highly fluctuating, highly, um, opaque because you won't really know what they want until you talk to them but talking itself is servicing already right so pretty tough and in those cases you need to know or find out an estimate of the standard deviation of the service times so in those case situations the standards the, the standard deviation will be high because it fluctuates a lot now in a more um, 
standardized transaction. For example, special counter, all right? A uh, special counter to for COVID nineteen inquiries. So, well, maybe the whole process is just to uh, answer one or two standard questions and then give you a FAQ brochure, right? So something like that. So if you are keen to get that very beautifully colored, uh, nicely printed brochure, plus um, checking if uh, certain branches might be open whatsoever, you know, simple questions, then you just stand in line and that line has pre quite predictable uh, service time because the bank will want that to happen. If that's the case, then your standard deviation will reduce to a value that is close to zero. So is it more or less constant? Is it fluctuating a lot in terms of the standard uh, service time? Will determine the value of standard deviation of service time. So again, we assume that the queue is stable, able to survive in the long term. And under those conditions, then we will take out this set of slides and apply uh, the formulas here, right? We want to basically calculate all these uh, outputs. The, the counting, the LQ, the L, the timing, the WQ and the W, and of course the probabilities. Yep, okay, so they will, as a, as, as a whole, give us a picture of how healthy the Q system is. Is it good or bad? Again, is left to our uh, individual uh, circumstances and the reference judgments. So what we need to do is just apply the formula here. So notice this particular part where sigma is very dominant. So in this case, when sigma is large, when sigma is large, it will penalize us not just proportionately, but it is in terms of the square of the standard deviation. So when everything else is constant, but sigma is allowed to be larger than before, let's say twice. So sigma, it, be, it worsens to two sigma. All right, so two times of the original fluctuation amount. Then our Q will be penalized kind of in a square manner. We will, we will suffer four times as badly than as before. That's the lesson learned here. So in other words, uh, we really want to watch our standard deviation. It's something quite invisible, right? It's not quite visible from transaction to transaction. We can detect the average kind of by our senses, right? Uh, I think I'm feeling longer and longer now. But uh, standard deviation is less visible unless you have, you, you have many, many um, transactions and you can then gradually feel it. So uh, this sigma, will be quite sensitive, right? So our, our Q size is quite sensitive to sigma. But knowing this formula, it also helps us to realize one thing, that wow, if doubling sigma means we might quadruple our Q size, then shouldn't we put in some effort to halve or minimize our sigma? Then we enjoy even greater benefits in terms of shortening the Q size, right? Yeah, so and that is true because we are well supported by the theory. So theory says, put in effort to reduce right half your sigma, you enjoy the shrinkage of your Q size a lot, a lot. And assuming lambda is constant, is fixed, not changed by your changing of sigma, then uh, shrinking LQ, halving it, uh, taking a quarter of it will help in terms of reducing the waiting time for your customers as well. So uh, very, very good benefits if you control your sigma. And of course, heavy penalty if you forgot, right? unleash the wildness of sigma, then that will be a problem. And finally, let's look at a sort of a quick browse at the MD1 Q system. Now, what does it mean? It means that the service time is constant. It does have an uninteresting distribution in, in the sense of having uh, just one over mu. Okay, and 100% of the transactions are happening at one over mu. So that's one, hundred percent, zero. So very uninteresting distribution, just a straight bar, not like a bell curve or something. So with this distribution, um, what can we do with the formulas? Well, if MG1 can handle everything, then it is basically able to handle constant distribution where sigma is zero. So what we do is just copy and paste from MG1 and set sigma to zero, thereby eliminating the term, right? So 
again, as in my previous example, suppose we, we have this uh, COVID-19 inquiry booth in the bank, and all we do is we, diff, we dish out this beautifully printed brochure. No questions, just, just give out the brochure, right? So it is very simple act of giving, and that's just maybe five seconds, and pretty standardized uh, because no questions are allowed, safety distancing and all that. So let's just say Sigma is so small that we can assume it's zero. Then in that case, we are essentially implementing a MD1 system where LQ is as short as it can get. Yeah, because you can't minimize anymore. Your sigma is already set to zero. So it is the best situation. And you can also explain to your supervisor, if you're in charge of the queue system, that you have done your best. You cannot reduce, reduce any further. No point wasting more effort, budget resources to try to improve the queue size because we have reached the minimum. Okay, uh, keeping all other values constant. So uh, if we have an MD1 system, then we take out this slide. Now again, um, what are some further examples of MD1 systems? We can enforce it. We can force the service time to be relatively constant, such as in um, perhaps uh, high discipline society or, or situations like the military or uh, security organizations. Other cases could be mechanical systems where, of course, the server is the robot or the ac active machines, and it is programmed to spend certain milliseconds on that part, right? So that has essentially no fluctuations. Then we will use MD1 uh, to model the situation. So that's the end of our discussion of the three uh, most encountered and uh, basic queue systems that we, want, uh, we are discussing in this video segment.